Well, Jose Young's here with the MMAfighting.com for the second time speaking with Robert Whitaker as one of our colleagues, Oscar Willis, turns the camera off, quote unquote, accidental. We'll get, you, we'll get to stick with the accident story, but anyway, Rob, we're here in Singapore. Mm -hmm. uh, you were supposed to fight Marvin Tori on this card, now you're fighting him in UFC Paris. What exactly happened that forced you to push back the fight with Marvin? Yeah, so I took, a, I took an injury in the previous camp and I thought I'd have time to heal. And um, then they gave me the fight and said everything lined up. Singapore. Marvin, three rounds, everything's perfect, only eight hours away, it was close to home. And I love Singapore, Singapore's an amazing country. So, I, uh, yeah, it, I just had to say yes. I took, said yes, jumped back in the gym and realized the injury wasn't healed. Uh, I, I thought it might come good, so I did a bunch of rehab and strength conditioning and it, it just didn't, it just didn't. So, uh, Marvin is in the top, like where he is right now for a good reason. He's tough as nails and he's been winning fights and he beats people. And I need to give him a full camp to respect that and you know that's exactly what he's going to get now because he, he wouldn't have got that before and i'm a professional at what i do so um he's getting a full camp and we're going to settle disputes in um paris well i understand you've never been to the U into europe uk paris anything so how important is it to be on this card considering it is the ufc's first ever event in paris cyril gone tie your countryman is in the yeah. main event you guys are the co-main event does it add anything extra to this fight yeah definitely uh, you know i've been very fortunate that uh during my career, I've done a lot of historical things and, and been a part of history in, in, in many different ways. And just to add to that list is very meaningful, you know, for my career, for, for what I've done and accomplished, as well as I've never been to Europe. So I am so pumped to be able to, to, to get there and to be able to fight there because one of the biggest perks to fighting in the UFC is being an international fighter. And now that with the borders open and everyone's moving around again, I can do that. I can see the world. Well, I heard you were talking about croissants before mm. we went live. You don't you don't call it a croissant in France. They pronounce it a little differently. They'll look at you like croissant. You, I think it's it's like a it's like a cue at the being like croissant. Croissant. Yeah, say it like say it, <laughs> say it like that, and they'll be like, all right, we Easy. accept you. And I'll say, cut it in half, toast it, and give me butter. And then they'll just be like, all right, now now you can you, leave. You're gonna have to leave, sir. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or, or you know, just don't eat croissants when you can't wait before a middleweight fight. Yeah. Let's be honest. When when I'm there for fighting, um, I'm not gonna be eating many croissants, sure. mate. Sure. Well, I do have to ask. We do have the big middleweight title fight for an international fight with Israel Adesanya and Jared Kennedy. You fought both of them. How do you see that fight playing out? Uh, it's gonna be a hard fight for Jared. Um, we're gonna have to see something different than he's shown us in the last few fights, just because. He's, he's been kept on the outside. He can be kept at reach. And, and when he's there, he doesn't have the, the most success. And Israel's a master of that, that sort of game, of, of keeping you at his reach and, and using his distance. He's a wily fellow to try and hit. Now, unrelated to these fights, we spoke a little bit before. Obviously, you've played Skyrim once or twice. Yeah. I think I've played Skyrim yeah. once or twice last week. So, anyway, so I'm going to. Important stuff. Yeah, we're going to talk about the more important stuff. We'll have a longer conversation maybe after your fight. But so, <laughs> we're going to ask you a couple questions. You can tell me the choices you make. So, right out of the gate. Keep Parthenax alive with the Greybeards or kill him and, re and join the Blades? Yeah, Blades for sure. I don't really like Parthenax and all the Greybeards. They're a bunch of hippies. <laughs> like, you don't think they are? <laughs> I mean, they're they're okay. Yeah, maybe like oh, the voice, yeah, whatever. Well, see, normally I keep them around because they're the ones that tell you where the walls are, and then once you get all the shouts, then you can kill them. You don't need the shouts, as if, as if you use any of them. I you, use a ton. Like if you fall off from a building, you become ethereal, and you land, you take no damage. You press F six, bro. Like, <laughs> like it's uh yeah no, I don't I don't like the gravies very much. The only the only thing you need them for is to train sneak attacks. That's it. <laughs> that's that's so you know it's a veteran. All right, kill Cicero or spare him at the end of the Dark Brotherhood quest. You spare him. You got to spare him. He's crazy as batshit, but you want him on your side. But he's also one of the few followers that can't die. So yeah. when you take him, he's pretty much a tank yeah. for you. As well, like if you're playing like a necro build, then you kill him and you resurrect him because he's like one of the strongest thralls you can have. And if you really want to get into it, you can get the thrall with a follower. And if you do the Dragonborn yeah, so DLC, you get a third. You, you, you get, get three followers. You get boys everywhere, unmodded. You can have like. Four guys following you at any one time. Which followers do you sacrifice to Boethia to get the armor? Oh, the the nerds from Riverwood. I don't like either one of them. The elf. Both of them, elf. Yeah, the 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 archer and the bard. They're both they're both crap. Well, I mean, the archer you can kind of grind build, and you could because you give him money to yeah, build your archery, yeah, and then you take it back. Only nerds use archery anyway. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> stealth, stealth, stealth archer is like the most popular build in that game. It was my first build too. <laughs> it's everyone's first build. I did I did like a just a full conjuring path stealth archer. It was like so strong, bro. Favorite mod that you can add you can add one mod which one do you add oh one only one. Only one. Oh mate that is terrible uh probably oh what's it called 
What's that one that changes the entire skill set? All the mods. It's um. Oh, um, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. I, I kind of the patch is technically a mod, so I kind of go with that. So not it doesn't everything bug out all the time. Oh no, nah, the bugs are part of the experience. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, nah, I forget what it's called. It's that it's that mod that cha literally changes. It's an overhaul mod, yeah. so it changes every single skill line. Um, I can't remember what it's called though. And I assume you've played the DLC, so in the Dawnguard one, do you join the Dawnguard or the Vampires? Dawnguard for sure. Vampires are ugly, bro. So ugly. So when you do the, the Companions quest, you keep the Werewolf, and then that obviously means you can't do the, the rested, the rested, the well-rested part. You don't need rested. Uh, we spoke about it before. Rested, like, who cares? 10% extra experience or 15. Sure. Like, it's nothing. Leveling's not hard in that game anyway. Best house you can buy. Best. Not, look, not, we're not doing the, the, the what, what, what's the one where you can build your house only? We're yeah. doing the vanilla Skyrim. Which Earth, one do you Hearthstone want? or whatever yeah, it's called. Yeah, yeah. Um, I love Earthfire. Them. Hearthfire. Earthfire. I love yeah. those houses, by the way. They're so good. They added so much for right, Then I'll rephrase. Of the three Hearthfire options, where do you build the your one house? near the water, up near, what's it called? Uh, the one near Riverwood. No, 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 up. Up the top oh, of the Oh, near, Mark, near Markarth. Yeah, because yeah. it's right near the water. Yeah, with all the crabs. Yeah, you love chase the your kids. <laughs> the crabs are the best. And you see your horse going around stomping them in the yard. <laughs> Do you keep, sacrifice, or give Barbus back? Uh, this is the talking dog. Oh, it depends. If I'm playing Werewolf Run, I need that ring, bro. Yeah, you do. <laughs> I, need, yeah, I need that ring. So I'll see you later, Bob. <laughs> we'll see. So you can, if, in that build, do you do the, 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 the bug where you can get both the armor and the ring? Did you no. know? Did, are you aware of that bug? I, no, I wasn't aware of it. But uh, no, I don't do that because, yeah, I just didn't know it existed. Didn't even know it existed. So you kill the werewolf, you, or you spare the werewolf, you run out, you get the ring, immediately run back in and kill him, you can get both. Huh. Didn't know that. I'm a completionist. I have to get everything. Uh, light or heavy armor? Uh, no armor. No Just armor. a conjurer with robes? Straight out. Alteration. Mage armor, bro. Okay. Easy. Easy money. Now, Plus, then you can wear whatever you want, bro. True. You, 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 you can fashion souls forever. Sure. Uh, Stormcloaks, Imperials, the big one. Imperials, for sure. Stormcloaks are just racist. And they're just... And, the, who's the, what's the what's the leader's name of the song? Ulfric Stormcloak. He's, he thinks he's so good. I hate him. He's a tool. Well, I kind of like how at the beginning it seems like he's a good guy, but then if you actually play the game, yeah. I mean, they're, neither one is really a good guy. They're he's both. A tool. Yeah. Yeah. I oh, know. Imperials are cool. All right. Well, thanks, Rob. Anything else you want to add about Skyrim? What are you hoping for in uh, Elder Scrolls Six? The, the the biggest the biggest upset about Skyrim. I don't think many people are speaking about, but the biggest upset in Skyrim was not being able to marry. That chick from the vampire, the, from the Dawn Guard. That's what I'm Dawnguard. saying. Because from, from the DLC, like not being able to marry Serena, yeah, Serena, the hottest NPC in the entire game, that you have to spend a numerous amount of time with. Like, what are you guys if doing? She can't die either, so it's like you get just look at an yeah. infinite amount. Of that was like the perfect wife. I don't understand. I don't understand. Well, apologies to Rob's wife that an undead vampire <laughs> that is can't die. You know, is the perfect wife. Well. She understands. Yeah, she understands. I hope. <laughs> anyway, thanks, Rob, and have fun in Singapore. Appreciate you. Thanks, brother.